Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I am going to be talking about the sixth album from Aphex Twin, Cyro. Now, I remember vividly when this album came out. At first, everyone was going nuts over it. It would be the first album from the guy in 13 years. While I too was excited, there was a part of me that was also skeptical. After all, I just got done with a video explaining in detail why I don't consider RDJ to be a musical god. Could he really bring something fresh to the table with this new release like he did with his other albums? Mind you, I realized that the fact that it was a real sixth Aphex Twin album meant unreasonably high expectations for everybody. I knew he'd set the bar too high, and that if it wasn't at least different from his usual fare, then it was guaranteed to be a disappointment. Lo and behold, upon hearing Cyro for the first time, I was immediately disappointed. I was expecting to be, but not to that extent. Almost none of the melodies were particularly memorable outside of the opening and closing tracks. It was boring like Hangable Autobulb, and it wasn't even any territory the guy hadn't explored before, especially in the Analard series. I wished deeply he had released the album under one of his aliases like AFX or Caustic Window or something, as I didn't feel like Cyro did justice to his previous album track record. Fast forward to now, 2016, where I'm reviewing Aphex Twin's discography, and not only did I find not all of his albums to be solid gold, but also a good portion of his side projects failed to particularly impress me either. I went back into Cyro to tear it a new one. I gave it my first listen in years, and it was way better than I remembered. Mind you, a lot of those initial criticisms still stand. Cyro is mostly a retreading of old territory, and when on in the background, pretty much the entire second half of the album passes right by without leaving any impression. Granted, unlike the Richard D. James album, it didn't get grating with repeat background listens, mainly thanks to a non-average, much more pleasant atmosphere than that album. But like the RDJ album, Cyro's most certainly not meant to just be played in the background. It's very much a listening album, and it's significantly longer than the RDJ album, so repeat in-depth listens are a must. And as I listen to Cyro more and more, the more it grew on me. Granted, really only three tracks had, I can remember the tune to without any, much of any effort, but it has far more substance than I gave it credit for. The problem with most of these tracks is the same with the track Karn Marth of Richard D. Games' album. They're constantly changing so much and so quickly that very few riffs stick around long enough to stay in your head. But Cartmarth was only about two minutes long. These songs are on average four to six minutes long, and again, only like three songs had riffs which stuck around long enough to stick in my head. So that should probably tell you how much substance this album has. Another thing about this album I should probably bring up at some point, these are some meaningless song titles if I've ever seen them. Like, I gave all the songs on drugs at least an honest pronunciation attempt, even though I felt like most of them were just gibberish. But some of these are such obvious random keyboard mashing that I won't even bother, like for a bit, uh, Cyro, uh, and then the second to last track, which I just refer to as Earth Portal. Like, give me a break. W, A, S, and R are all in the same general area on a QWERTY keyboard. Don't even try to convince me he gave a shit about this title. So now with that rant out of the way, Let's talk about the actual music. Now, Cyro is an obvious nostalgia bomb, and as everything is made up of lots of analog synths with some occasional pianos and other sounds, and as mentioned earlier, despite its abstract nature, it's surprisingly pleasant and welcoming, again, to enhance the nostalgia factor. The first couple of tracks feel like a walk through a park in the city, like over by me here in Chicago, like a walk down Michigan Avenue or something. Take the opening track, Mini Pop 67, which is one of the three songs that I can easily remember the tune to. The back half of this song has very slurred vocals from RTK himself. And while the tune underneath him doesn't stick to the point very well, the melody he sings doesn't change, leading it to be more memorable. The second track, Xmas Eve at 10, is m memorable for just how much there is to it. I did kind of find myself humming the melody to Mini Pop 67 for most of it, 
but there's a lot of fun sounds on it, from the usual analog synths and pianos, to a dark ambient pad in the beginning that wouldn't have been out of place on his second album, to this borderline catchy melody on synth bells, to even some female voices at the end. Really cool track. Product 29 has kind of a bouncier beat, but this and the next track are more or less just a continuation of Xmas Eve at 10. The latter track, 4 bit blah blah blah, actually does have some more memorable moments, but only when I'm listening in depth. Next is 180db, which on any other Aphex Twin project I would have hated. It's repetitive and atonal, there's not much to it, and it reminds me of those less memorable caustic window tracks more than anything, but this is actually one of my favorites, since it's one of the three tracks that I can remember the tune to. In a sea of abstract and non catchy tracks, a straightforward and repetitive track like this is actually a real breath of fresh air. Speaking of abstract and non catchy, Next is Sir Clon 6A. This track goes every which way, though a bit more intense and kind of 8-bit sounding than the rest of the album. Then we have FZ Pseudo Time Stretch, which is basically just the voice sample from the very beginning of Sir Clon 6A, chopped up and glitched up even further, but not even lasting a full minute. It's interesting and cool that he forms a melody out of like really tiny voice samples, but uh, the melody's awfully forgettable. Next is Sir Clant 14, which aside from having a similar beat, really doesn't have anything in common to its similarly titled counterpart. The most memorable thing about this little riff sung by these really breathy vocals, which somehow gets catchier every time I hear it. The next two tracks have also been getting increasingly catchy with repeat listens. Cyro Ebleble has a lot more to it, and is probably the better track because of it. Though, if he only repeated one quarter of that main spastic melody, I'd probably be much more of an earwormy track. Pat Pat 4 is more simplistic, but has been growing on me more quickly as a result. Then we get, uh, Earth Portal, which has a lot of these cool bell sounds, but like Circle on 6A, nothing sticks around long enough to be particularly memorable. I think there's like three main melodies here. Thankfully, after all that randomness and analytical listening, we get a straight piano track as the closer. I Set Santa is a beautiful and simplistic piece that really feels like RDJ saying, you had to do a lot of in-depth listening. Let's end with a track that you don't have to think too hard to enjoy. Unsurprisingly, this track was pretty consistently my favorite on the album. So, overall, I'd say in the end all the repeat listens were well worth it. This is very much an album that takes a lot of dedication to enjoy to the fullest extent. There's a ton to unpack, and a lot of it seems to zip by so quickly you never notice it on first listen. For those of you who found this album to be a disappointment, I'd say it's worth giving a second chance. Again, this is not up to par with his best work, and even with so many in-depth listens, I don't think I'd ever get to the point of calling it great. But it has grown on me quite a bit in preparation for this review, and I don't feel like any time was wasted. Probably not going to recommend this one quite as highly, as it took a lot of time to grow on me, and the end payoff isn't as good as other albums that took so many listens to enjoy, like, for instance, the Black Dog Spanners. But at the same time, I can't really think of anything I particularly dislike about it either. It's a fine album, and worth checking out if you're looking for a more analytical listen, just don't expect it to hit you right away. I'm overall feeling a 7.7 .7 out of 10. Favorite tracks, Mini Pop 67, uh, Xmas Eve at 10, Product 29, 180db, Cyro Eire, Paypad 4, and I Sad Santa. Least favorite track, uh, FZ Pseudo Time Stretch. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the comments in the comment thing. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.